Round three of the season takes us to the Middle East island of Bahrain for the first night race of the season. It's two wins from two for Mercedes so far this season, with Hamilton taking victory in Australia and Bottas in China. But it has been far from plain sailing for the Silver Arrows, with Bottas suffering from a poor strategy choice in Australia and Hamilton having ERS deployment issues in China. That means that Ferrari have taken an early lead in both championships, with Sebastian Vettel's two second place finishes taking him to the top of the driver's standings. Second place Michael Schumacher will be looking to close that gap this weekend after two podium finishes on his return to the sport, but a failed engine upgrade means that the performance gap to Mercedes will be large and will hinder them on Bahrain's long straights. Outside of the top two teams, it's been an impressive start to the season by Esteban Ocon, who has had two fifth place finishes to kick off his Force India career. His teammate Sergio Perez may have outqualified him in both Grand Prix so far, but his race pace has been lacking, and Perez will be looking to make up for that this weekend. Tensions are rising once again between Red Bull and their engine supplier Renault, after two engine failures last time out in China. Max Verstappen was just two laps from victory before his engine failed, and he'll pay the price for that by taking a 10-place grid penalty this weekend. So the drivers were eager to get into qualifying at a circuit which has produced some classic races in this hybrid era so far. Let's see how they get on. As the sun set over the Bahrain Desert on Saturday, it was time for the drivers to get out on track and for qualifying to begin. Looking at the bottom half of the grid now, you can see that it was Stoffel Van Dorn that propped up the field in a disappointing session for the McLaren man, and he will start on the back row of the grid alongside Marcus Ericsson. Ericsson's teammate Verlum will start in 18th just behind Lance Stroll, in another disappointing session for the Williams man. Fernando Alonso was just a tenth off making it into Q2, but he will start 16th alongside Max Verstappen, who takes an engine penalty as a result of his heartbreaking retirement last time out. The seventh row sees Carlos Sainz and Pierre Gasly, both drivers starting behind their respective teammates, and Nico Hulkberg and Romain Grosjean narrowly missed out on the top 10. Getting into Q3 now, and there's a brilliant lap from Lewis Hamilton which sees him occupy pole position on Sunday, alongside his teammate Bottas. Valtteri set his Q2 lap on the soft tyre, meaning he'll be running longer in the first stint. Schumacher once again outqualified his teammate Vettel, this time by two tenths of a second, and he'll be looking to take advantage of Bottas, who's starting on the harder compound of tyre on Sunday. Over a second off the pace were the two Red Bull drivers of Verstappen and Ricardo, but Verstappen's penalty will see Ricardo starting from P5. Looking now at the full top 10, you can see that Esteban Ocon made it into Q3 for the first time and will start just behind his teammate Perez, with Massa and Magnussen also making it into the top 10 shootout. Mercedes were looking strong around the desert on Saturday, but will they be able to transfer that into a win on Sunday? Let's get into the action! What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the F1 2017 Shumi career here today for round number three at the Bahrain Grand Prix and as you heard there it is once again an all Mercedes front row and once again a big thank you to Matt for doing the commentary for qualifying so yeah here we go then getting into the formation lap and uh, you can see today it's between a two-stop and a three-stop strategy, so quite a bit different uh, to sort of the generic one-stoppers that we've seen, uh, you know, quite a way through the real-life season. But uh, yeah, as as you also you heard in the qualifying report, uh, Bottas is starting on the harder compound soft tyres, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the rest of the top ten I believe are on the super soft, so it'll be interesting to see how Bottas gets on. But uh, yeah, as always, guys, if you can leave a like down below. If it's not hit 100 likes, make sure this video does hit 100 likes and then I'll, uh, I'll release another one next week. We've managed to keep it up so far, but now we are going to get in to the Bahrain Grand Prix. Round number three is go and it's been a poor start from Bottas. Can Schumacher take advantage? It looks like he can and he's already up into P2 before turn one, but it's been a good start from Hamilton and uh, now you can see just behind... Uh, that uh, Vettel is also trying to make a move, as is one of the Red Bull drivers of Daniel Ricciardo. And now you can see Schumacher right on the tail of uh, Lewis Hamilton, who has had a poor exit through uh, turns 1, 2 and 3. And as they run up the hill to uh, to turn 4, Schumacher's going to try and bear it round the outside, but he's always going to get squeezed out in that situation. 
but uh, still very good start from Schumacher. He has made that position up on Bottas, which he was trying to do, and he makes a switchback move now as they go into the hairpin, and it looks as if he, if he can get good traction, he may be able to get ahead of Hamilton, but that isn't the case, and now we're getting towards this double left-hander, which is so easy to lock up at. They are, uh, well, very much filing through at the moment, all of the cars, uh, that back end of the top 10. You know, Bahrain just such a good circuit for following, uh, even with these uh, hybrid era cars. Uh, so, yeah, it should make for a very, very good race this afternoon. Do make sure to stick around. And, uh, yeah, now as we take a replay, you may have been able to see there were yellow flags at uh, at sort of the, the first part of that lap. And uh, we go on board with Roman Grosjean. He gets squeezed by his teammate, nonetheless, of Kevin Magnussen. So, uh, what happened there? Was it Magnussen that just squeezed him out? Or was there another culprit? So, we can just see Magnussen here, who's got uh, Massa on the outside of him. And, yes, he just gets completely squeezed by Massa. So, Massa makes contact with Magnussen. And then that has another knock-on effect. So, uh, if anyone's at fault, I'd say it would probably be Felipe Massa. But uh, I think that will go down as a racing incident. But, uh, anyway, back to the action now. And at the end of lap one... So uh, we've mentioned quite heavily the Force Indias so far this weekend and they are very much on the pace with uh, Sergio Perez now looking to make a move on Daniel Ricciardo. So he moves to the inside and with that powerful Mercedes engine, uh, is he going to be able to make the uh, move up into P5? There's a bit of contact between the two of them. Ricciardo fighting very heavily as you'd expect, but he gets squeezed to the inside. And what a brilliant move from Sergio Perez. He's also uh, just behind uh, Ricciardo now is Esteban Ocon. So he'll be looking to take advantage as well. But uh, yeah, just really, really good from the Force India guys. And uh, obviously the Renault engines probably turned down a little bit as a result of their issues last time out in China. But uh, yeah, Schumacher one and a half seconds behind Hamilton after the first couple of laps. He will be looking to uh, get within DRS range. Of course, we are now on lap three. And sure enough, come lap five, the tyre is very much coming towards Schumacher. It's been the case this season that uh, in terms of tyre warm-up, Mercedes have had that one in the bag. But uh, yeah, as we now get further into the race, it looks as if this Mercedes uh, car just maybe isn't quite as strong uh, towards the end of the stint. So yeah, Schumacher is looking to take advantage. He gets DRS for the first time, but uh, just isn't able to close up. That back straight, really, really difficult to overtake. It's more a case of, uh, you know, closing up to the car and then being able to make a move uh, later on in the lap on the pit straight. But uh, yeah, it's been a very good uh, second sector from Schumacher. He's just half a second behind now. A little bit of a tank slapper out of the penultimate corner. But uh, now coming towards the uh, the final turn. Uh, on the track map, it does count as two turns, but we all know it's pretty much one corner. And uh, getting out, out uh, of the exit of that turn, you can see he does get DRS once again. And how close will he be? Will he be able to make a move now into turn one? He is closing up, even with that slightly less powerful Ferrari engine. And he's going to try and go around the outside of uh, Lewis Hamilton, but I don't think it's going to quite work. Maybe try and give himself a good setup through turn four. And as they go through now turn three, it looks as if Schumacher is going to possibly be in a good position to uh, make a dive down the inside and he does do that just uh, to let Hamilton know that he's there. Hamilton does close the door this time on lap six but we're not too far away now from the first pit stops. So uh, Mercedes, Ferrari, either one of them might be looking to try and get the undercut. Uh, I believe lap 7 is the expected lap for them to come in. And Hamilton now defends to the inside as they go towards the final corner. So Schumacher will get the DRS. And it's all about lining that car up for a good exit of this final turn. And Hamilton actually peels off into the pit. Schumacher thinks about it. But uh, he's gone for the different strategy to Hamilton. Also Sebastian Vettel in the pit lane. So that will be why Schumacher didn't come in to the box at the end of the lap. And now he just has to push as hard as he can as we uh, take a look at Lewis Hamilton, who does get a clean getaway. But uh, there you can see, um, it looks as if uh, Sebastian Vettel has actually closed up to the Brit. And that will be interesting to see whether uh, Vettel is in fact closer when they come out of the pit lane. There's quite a bit of traffic and that could hinder them on the outlap. So uh, yeah, Hamilton comes out. And it looks as if Vettel is a hell of a lot closer. Vettel just emerging ahead of one of the Salvers. But uh, yeah, a little bit of clear air in front of them. It'll be interesting to see whether that's still the case come the end of the lap. 
And uh, yeah, sure enough, as they get onto the back straight, I believe that is one of the Haas cars of Roman Grosjean. Of course, he had that uh, spin at Turn 1, and he finds himself behind a McLaren Honda. And now it is the problem of Lewis Hamilton. And he has got to try and find the way past, or else uh, Schumacher and Bottas uh, could end up jumping in. So uh, now they come through the uh, the penultimate corner, and yes, there is a good train of cars. So there's a Sauber, a McLaren, and a Haas, all in the way of uh, two of the front four. But uh, coming into the box now is Schumacher at the end of lap eight, and Bottas has actually ended up coming into the pit lane at the same time as Schumacher. So he had the you know, the, the compound advantage, you would have thought, you know, he'd go longer out of traffic, but no, he decides to come in, and now we can see that uh, there's Hamilton, and there is uh, Sebastian Vettel, Vettel's trying to go for a move on Hamilton, and it looks as if Schumacher has come out in the lead of this Grand Prix, Bottas and uh, Vettel going side by side on the exit of turn three. Bottas is going to have the inside line as they go up to turn four. But is Vettel going to be able to squeeze around the outside? It'd be a wonderful move if he did. They're still side by side, but just about prevailing is the German of uh, Sebastian Vettel. And as they plunge down into sector two, it's been an awful couple of laps for the Mercedes drivers with uh, Valtteri Bottas in P3. And Lewis Hamilton losing three positions with basically in the space of a lap. And uh, so he is down into a net P4. The, uh, the net, leader this, net, net leader of this race is now Michael Schumacher. And if he can negotiate Marcus Ericsson at the end of this straight, that would do him a hell of a lot of good. Uh, obviously, Ericsson with that 2016 Ferrari engine. So, uh, yeah, no match for the, uh, the brand new Ferrari. Uh, engine and he gets up into P4 only a few cars left ahead and uh, sure enough by the end of lap 9 Lance Stroll peels into the pits to give Schumacher the lead of the race but it uh, looks as if it's Sebastian Vettel on a rampage he was in P4 uh, just before the uh, the pits, uh, pits window started and now he's in P2 closing in on his teammate and uh, now getting onto lap 10 is Vettel now going to try and make a move because he is in DRS range yes he's just half a second behind as Bottas sets the fastest lap of the race and uh, you can see going into turn one just how close uh, Sebastian Vettel is now so I don't think it'll be too long uh, before he makes a move. I'm sure he'll be getting clarification from the guys on the pit wall uh, to uh, just be, you know, just approve the fact that he can go for this uh, race victory because uh, obviously Ferrari won't want their drivers taking each other out as we see this stunning camera angle, uh, the bird's eye view as they plunge down into sector two, a wonderful section of track for the drivers, maybe not for overtaking, but uh, definitely from a driving and a viewer's standpoint, very good. But you can see, the, uh, the two Mercedes drivers, just a, a little bit of a gap behind to them. So at this stage of the race, you would definitely say that the Ferraris are the quickest cars on paper. And uh, now getting onto the back straight, will Vettel possibly make a move here? It would be very risky, especially on his teammate. And uh, now I think he's just going to save it for the meantime. But Vettel is definitely the quickest man on the circuit at the moment. And uh, he'll be looking to be released and really burn his pace. And uh, try and win this Grand Prix. And sure enough, he gets a wonderful exit off the final corner. Probably using his uh, ERS deployment to full effect. And he gets ahead of Schumacher, who's now going to have to break really late into Turn 1 if he's going to stand any chance of defending. He tries to go around the outside. That will turn into the inside. He gets squeezed by Vettel. But now going through Turn 3, they're almost side by side. Schumacher's front wing is almost level with Vettel's rear tyres. So he's got to be careful. But uh, is he going to try and go around the outside? Outside. No, he isn't because he knows he's just going to get squeezed round there. And uh, Sebastian Vettel takes the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix on lap 12. Schumacher's pace just hasn't been as good on this soft tyre as his teammate. But he will be looking to uh, sort of stick by him for as long as possible. But you can just see the exit off that corner. Vettel has so much more grip. Uh, on the soft compound of tyres. So, uh, yeah, Schumacher evidently on the super soft. You know, he, he completely had the pace. But as soon as they switched these soft tyres, I don't know where the pace from Vettel has come from. Because he looks as if he's uh, almost building up enough of a gap to uh, get out of DRS range of Schumacher. Really stretching his legs already. And this is the stage of the Grand Prix to do it. So Schumacher's next task is to try and fend off uh, Valtteri Bottas. 
who has gone for two soft stints so far, which is uh, a little bit baffling, it has to be said. You know, pretty much negates the uh, advantage of qualifying on the uh, on the soft tyres. You would have expected him to go into the super softs and then have a medium stint at the end, but uh, now Bottas is going for the move on the soft tyres. No matter uh, the strategy that he's gone for, he's still doing better than his teammate, but uh, Schumacher counteracts that move by going back down the inside and maintaining P2 for the meantime. But uh, yeah, just like in China, uh, Hamilton's pace has been a little bit non-existent. Uh, he led the race early on for the first stint, but as soon as we switched onto the soft tyres, it's been complete roll reversal. Vettel and Bottas have been the two to watch out for, the ones that were scrapping for P2, uh, sorry, P3 and P4. Uh, in the first seven laps of the race. But yeah, Vettel is just extending his lead at the moment as we uh, approach half race distance now and the sun is very much uh, going down on this uh, Bahrain circuit. But uh, yeah, lap 14 and you can see that there's a little bit of activity now on the Ferrari pit wall and I think they've gone for a change of strategy with Schumacher. This uh, soft tyre just isn't working whatsoever. He gets it slowed down in time and they're going to try and go the last half of this Grand Prix on the medium tyres. A bit of change to the front wing as well to give him a bit more bite in the corners and uh, hopefully uh, be able to follow uh, just a little bit better. But uh, yeah, Schumacher comes out now and it'll be interesting to see uh, in what position it will be. So uh, currently in P6 and I believe that is Kevin Magnussen just coming past. Uh, yes, indeed, it is. And Pierre Gasly uh, with uh, Nico Hulkenberg, you can see as well now. So Schumacher should just about emerge ahead of the Renault driver and sure enough, he does. But uh, yeah, the final 15 laps are going to be done on these uh, on these medium tyres. I mean, it shouldn't be too much of an issue uh, because these medium tyres are just a very hard compound. But they're the only compound of tyres that will go to the end of this Grand Prix. So on to lap 16 now. And uh, Schumacher has found himself behind Pierre Gasly and uh, Kevin Magnussen. So he'll be looking to uh, try and negotiate them as soon as possible because this is really losing him time now. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, closing up to the uh, the front runners, And his teammate will be uh, licking his lips, uh, seeing, uh, seeing Schumacher stuck behind uh, midfield runners. Uh, because, of course, he's in the clean air at the front and uh, should be able to emerge in the lead at the uh, final pit stops. But uh, you've got to beg the question, is this the correct strategy to do for Schumacher? Because he was just about hell, uh, fending off uh, Valtteri Bottas. And they've put him out into a little bit of traffic now as he goes down the inside of Gasly. That really was a do or die move from Schumacher. If he is to stand any chance of getting onto that second step or even the top step of the podium. He's got to dispatch of these two in the final couple of corners. He sticks behind Magnussen for the meantime. But of course he will have the DRS as they exit this final corner. And uh, Magnussen actually comes into the pit lane. So that makes that one a little bit easier. But uh, you may have been able to see that uh, Sebastian Vettel actually came into the pits. And he has emerged into the lead of this Grand Prix. And there is Lewis Hamilton who's also come in to the pits. And uh, Schumacher is going to want to try and get ahead of the Brit. And they're side by side once again. They've basically been for the entirety of this Grand Prix. The top four have been so closely matched. But it looks as if Schumacher prevails this time out. And uh, Vettel has got quite a, uh, quite a large lead up at the front. We will take a look at the end of this first sector to see exactly what it is. And it is 4.8 seconds. So yes, he has extended that lead as Schumacher gets a big tank slapper on there. And uh, now coming to the end of lap 17, I believe this is when Valtteri Bottas is about to make his final pit stop. So uh, yeah, this is the um, sort of... We're going to get an idea now to see where Bottas is in this race and whether he can challenge Vettel for the lead of the Grand Prix. And there he, he is. He's already emerged into P2 as Hamilton takes a look at Schumacher. There is action everywhere between these top four. And uh, it looks as if Vettel has got a big lead up at the front now and Bottas will be chuffed to have got ahead of Schumacher. He couldn't quite dispatch of him on track, but he has done it in the pits. And uh, yeah, Ferrari will be kicking themselves. They didn't leave Schumacher out a little bit longer. And uh, he probably could have done that final stint on the soft tyres, judging by the tyre wear. But Ferrari this weekend only chose to take one set of the soft tyres. So uh, yeah, didn't have any spare, so had to go on to the mediums, which is uh, part of the reason why they switched him on to the other strategy. But now we've got 10 laps remaining in this Grand Prix. And the goal for both Hamilton and Schumacher is to stand on that final step of the podium and uh, a little bit behind them is Sergio Perez but he won't be too much of a danger for the meantime 
I think the uh, the main, this is going to be the main battle now to the end of the Grand Prix. The uh, the top two positions are pretty much sorted, but now you can see just how close Lewis Hamilton is getting. Obviously, two long straights, uh, two places where the Mercedes very much has the advantage over the Ferrari. And uh, now at the end of lap 19, so just one lap later, uh, Hamilton is once again going to have an opportunity to try and get ahead of Schumacher. So yeah, like I say, this is just going to be the battle to the end of the Grand Prix. Let me know now down in the comments, who do you think is going to get that P3? Is it going to be Schumacher? Is it going to be Hamilton? Currently Hamilton is ahead, but surely Schumacher is going to try and uh, sort of brave it around the outside on the brakes. And surely not. Surely you can't do that. There's a little bit of contact between the two of them now, but I think Schumacher has just emerged in the lead. Hamilton will be there on the inside uh, looking to try and get the move so he's probably in the better position now but Hamilton is now just breaking a little bit earlier and Schumacher holds his position but no they're still side by side going into the middle sector. What a battle this is turning into and uh, now switching to the inside is Schumacher. He's going to try and get that apex, try and claim it on the exit of the uh, middle of the middle sector and now as they go to the double left hander at turn 9 and 10 it looks as if Schumacher is just ahead but boy surely you can't be doing that for the final 10 laps and uh, you may be able to see just behind them Sergio Perez is very much closing up on these two and if they continue to battle surely he'll be a factor later on in the Grand Prix they're still side by side it's quite incredible to see and uh, this time Hamilton is ahead so he does make the move in the middle sector the first time really that we've uh, we've seen sort of cars of a similar pace actually pass each other in that middle sector but uh, now it is uh, Hamilton ahead of Schumacher but Schumacher does of course have that DRS going in to the uh, the final turn or sorry exiting the final turn so it's not over yet and he can't afford to see Hamilton disappear off into the distance uh, but uh, yeah, it's just it's been an incredible race so far. We're only two thirds of the way through. So now going down the inside once again is Schumacher. He's breaking very, very late and he's squeezed Hamilton to the outside. But it's just about a fair move, I think. And he does get up back into P3. What a race this is turning into. A real classic in the desert once again. It reminds me of the real life 2014 Grand Prix. And there you can see Sergio Perez now very much closing up. And uh, I believe at the end of this lap, if he manages to stay that close, he will have DRS on, uh, on Lewis Hamilton. So, uh, I mean, it won't uh, do Hamilton any good whatsoever, nor will it do Schumacher any good. But, uh, yeah, Hamilton now going down the inside once again on lap 22. But Hamilton, is, uh, he's actually managed to go around the outside. So this time is the first time that Hamilton has emerged the leader of the two uh, on the exit of turn three. Surely Schumacher's going to dive one down the inside this time. And, yes, he does. Is he going to be able to make the move stick or has Hamilton got it around the outside? No, he's just about got it. And going into the middle sector, which the Ferrari is probably the stronger car, uh, Hamilton has got that one. So uh, now going into the hairpin, is he going to try and claim the apex on the inside? Once again, he parks it, but uh, Hamilton prevails. And you just don't know who is going to come out on top. This is incredible racing from two of the greatest drivers of the 21st century. So Hamilton still ahead and a little bit of a tank slapper from Schumacher who has got to be wary of Perez. So he can't be darting all over the place uh, because you just don't know where that Mexican is going to appear. But uh, now onto the start of lap 23. Schumacher through that final sector does manage to keep up with Hamilton and surely we're going to see another lunge down the inside this time and it is a very very late one and he just does so well at claiming that apex to Schumacher and uh, really is a great trait of his uh, going to the inside. I'm surprised that Hamilton hasn't become wise to it yet to be honest uh, but uh, yeah Schumacher once again getting ahead and as we now look it looks as if Perez has joined in on the action as has Daniel Ricciardo and Perez and Hamilton are now side by side. Who is going to come out on top? Perez does have the inside into the first corner but uh, not once again and uh, unless he can get pretty brave on the brakes I think Hamilton is going to get P4 but uh, this is incredible third down to sixth separated by about two seconds and it was looking like a four-way battle between the two Mercedes and the two Ferrari cars but it's turned into a Mercedes Ferrari Force India and Red Bull battle 
in the final six laps of the Grand Prix. And they are pretty much in formation. So uh, Daniel Ricciardo, who uh, had a pretty difficult start to the Grand Prix, has somehow managed to put himself into contention for a podium spot. And uh, obviously Sergio Perez, who has struggled in the first two races to keep pace with his teammates, not during qualifying, but during the race. Uh, he's very much responded this weekend, so he must have been doing a lot of work uh, in the uh, the race weekend, sorry, the weekend leading up to this Grand Prix. But uh, now coming it through to turn one, he made a move on Ricardo here earlier, and he's going to try and do the same on Lewis Hamilton. That is Sergio Perez going down the inside. It's a lockup from Hamilton, and Perez is up into P4, and now it's going to be Ricardo versus Hamilton. It's going to be a drag race up to turn four. Currently, it's Ricardo ahead of Hamilton, but surely Hamilton's going to use that Mercedes engine to full effect. He's going to try and go around the outside, but it just hasn't worked out there this afternoon but he's side by side now with Danny Ricardo, and what a move that would be from Hamilton it really is a do or die for his championship chances at this early stage in the season but wonderful racing from two of the best drivers on the grid Ricardo v Hamilton side by side but it is Lewis Hamilton that comes out on top and uh, now starting lap 26 Hamilton has really got the bit between his teeth and uh, probably got his confidence back after overtaking Ricardo. Because now he's going for a move on Sergio Perez. With uh, Perez just not being able to trouble uh, the uh, the Ferrari car of Schumacher up ahead. And uh, yeah, it was only a matter of time, I think, before Hamilton was going to get back past. Uh, but I do think now Hamilton will be wary of that threat from behind when going for a move on Schumacher. So there's just four laps left in the Grand Prix. Now that turns to two laps as we skip on to lap 27. And we've got Schumacher against Hamilton. Pretty much part 28. Because it's been a 28 laps full of action between these two. Hamilton pulls to the outside. Schumacher claims his inside as he'll want to get to that apex. But Hamilton now just a little bit further ahead this time. Schumacher wasn't quite as punchy on the brakes. Maybe Hamilton was a bit later and a bit braver this time. But uh, now surely we're going to see Schumacher try and move down the inside. Hamilton doesn't cover it. And uh, Schumacher now claims that apex once again. And they are side by side. But going around the outside is Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton and he makes the move stick up in to P4 and is that going to be the move that we see uh, get Lewis Hamilton his podium because uh, obviously it's the first time he's been actually up into a uh, into position three for a good amount of time he was down in P6 just a few laps ago but uh, I think there's only going to be two more opportunities for Schumacher to get ahead now that is going to be this straight of which he definitely isn't close enough and then the uh, the uh, the pit straight to start lap 29 but now ending lap 29 is Sebastian Vettel it's been an imperious drive from the German he extends his championship lead and it is victory for Ferrari for the first time this season going through the final corner now is Valtteri Bottas who just wasn't able to trouble the German this afternoon and to add to his two second places is a win. It's Potas's second podium finish of the season. And that takes him up the driver's standings now. But there you can see coming through the final corner, pretty much untroubled from Schumacher is Lewis Hamilton. So he started from pole position, couldn't convert it into the win. But after starting in P3, it was only P4 for Schumacher. It could have been so much more. He led the Grand Prix for a short amount of time, but no podium finish this afternoon. But uh, Maurizio Arriva Bene and the Ferrari guys still looking pleased because, of course, it is their first victory of the season. They have shown that they can definitely take the fight to Mercedes throughout the course of the season. Vettel looking happy and uh, as he does on the podium. The two Mercedes guys not looking too happy, but uh, I think they'll they'll take the points this afternoon because uh, obviously both of the Mercedes guys managed to defeat Michael Schumacher in a disappointing afternoon for him. But spraying the champagne very happily is Sebastian Vettel and what a start to the season it's been for him. And uh, I'm pretty sure Mercedes will... Um, not close the gap to Ferrari. So yeah, Ferrari will lead the drive, the, sorry, the constructors standings. But there you can see the final race results. Another P5 for Force India, this time for Sergio Perez. Ocon actually, a poor race from him this afternoon, which was very strange because of course it was good qualifying. But it, yeah, he could only manage P11. A good drive from uh, Max Verstappen from 15th up to 9th. And uh, yeah, as we look at the bottom half of the grid, there was actually no DNFs. Uh, this afternoon, which was quite incredible, but uh, difficult races for Massa and Kvyat, 
both started in the top 10 and both finishing 19th and 20th and being lapped. So yeah, disappointing for them. Double points uh, scoring day for both the Haas drivers. But there we can see the drivers standing. So Vettel extends his lead at the top and Bottas moves from 4th to 2nd. With Schumacher moving from 2nd to 4th. So it's very tight between 2nd and 4th place. But uh, yeah, they'll have to be careful that uh, Vettel doesn't disappear out the front. And uh, yes, Ferrari extend their lead at the top of the constructors standings so they are on to uh, quite a lot of points now over 100 already at this early stage of the season but uh, guys if you have enjoyed this race do make sure to leave a like down below comment your thoughts i'm completely out of breath because that was an incredible grand prix and uh, yeah i'll see you next week for another episode of the streaming career where we'll be in russia next time out but until then guys do take care bye bye